T. Clark here, and this video is going to go over the 2023 AP Computer Science A um, number 3B FRQ. So in this one, we're going back to the first page of 3. I'm going to go over what I skipped because it says to be implemented in Part B, and I ignored it. So now I say, okay, this is going to return the, the length of the longest heat wave found in temperatures as described in Part B. So there's going to be at least uh, one heat wave in temperatures based on the threshold. So there, there will be a heat wave. So let's see, so the longest heat wave, we have a parameter, we return an int. So skip to page two. Again, I'd have this page open um, and I'd have the first page open when I'm working on part B. I, do, I ignore this 12, page 12 in this case. So like I said, write this method, which returns the length of the longest heat wave. Well, there's been a lot of counting as we go through the iteration, this this uh, this test, it's kind of weird. It's like every, every question we've been counting as we go through, um, either way, at least the way I solve it. <laughs> so let's see, a heat wave is a sequence of two or more consecutive days with a daily high temperature. So the temperature greater than the parameter threshold. So two or more that are greater. So if I skip, uh, guaranteed at least one heat, is guaranteed to have at least one heat wave. So uh, there will always be at least two that are more than that heat wave. Okay. Um, that's just based on the, uh, that's the precondition. The preconditions will be solved. So don't have to worry about um, interesting cases. We don't have to worry about that. So here's my data. Um, in this scenario, um, all the heat waves, there are two heat waves in this case, bigger than 105, bigger than 105. So that's the two right there. And then there's three right there. So to re it would return three because that's the number of heat waves that are ready to go. And then we want to say, if we change the threshold to 95.2, there would still be two heat waves, but the first one would gain these two and the last one wouldn't gain any uh, days. So this one would have four days and that would be the, uh, that would be the longest heat wave it would be four. Okay, so I wanna return this int. So I set up, okay, I wanna return my result. I start at zero and I'm gonna return result. I could probably get away with resetting it at two, but I'm just going to set it zero because right now there hasn't been any heat waves. Um, speaking of which, what's the current wave? What's the current count? I'll just keep using count. I, I think I wrote down wave when I did it. I'll keep using count. That's what I did in other videos. So the count or the wave I'm at, and then I'm going to loop through. Well, if I start with a loop, I could loop through, uh, loop through my temperature. So for int i equals zero, I less than um, temperatures. I think you might be able to get temperatures dot size. You could probably get get uh, you could probably get away with doing it backwards. Yeah, it would work backwards. But I just like having my loops like normal, unless I have to remove something. Okay, so that still does this. Okay, so I'm looping through through like normal. Okay, if it's a um. I want to see if the days are hot days, I guess. So if the current temperature, so temperature dot get, that's a weird word. Is that, am I spelling this right? Yeah, I am, I guess. Okay, whatever. Um, get I. So if the current temperature is above that threshold parameter, okay, so I just use threshold, threshold, then I'm going to increment my count. So my wave is one day longer. Okay, so every day um, I have that threshold, it gets longer, and then I say, okay, is that the longest? Is it the longest anymore? If the count is bigger than my current result, so now it's just now it's just a maximum algorithm, my result is that count. So I'm incrementing count, and as I go, if the count is bigger than whatever my result is, my result is that count. And then I say, okay, if the temperatures are not uh, hot enough. If it gets to, uh, I'm done with my wave, basically done with the wave. Uh, that's my else. Else it's a nice cool day. And my count goes back to zero. I'm not counting it anymore. Zero, 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 zero. Count it one, count it. Wait, I count this one. Actually, I would count this one. One. Wait, wait, wait. 95. Yeah, I'd count this one, but it wouldn't count because it's only one, right? Not 95 there. So I'd count one, two, three, and then back to zero, right? Yeah. So I think that is actually it. Get rid of some of this extra white space here. 
and return result in. Don't forget to return result when you're writing this out. So I always like setting it up at the beginning at the bottom of the page, putting return result because that's almost a point right there. So if I look at this, it uh, looks like I got the right answer. It's three and four. So the pink ones on the right are my answers uh, based on my main method, which I haven't shown you. So again, you want to loop through all the temperatures, find the ones that are hot enough for the threshold in this case, in this scenario, and then um, count my days on that wave. And if that count is bigger than what I have, it's a maximum, and set that result, that maximum to whatever count it's at, and then reset it every cold day, I guess, every not hot day. So that's uh, number 3A on 2023 FRQs for Computer Science A. Have a good day.